on Hawaiian punch Know you like all this gush I know you can't get enough Sip, sipping on Hawaiian punch, ayy Hey, my name is Adeline Warren and you're listening to Girl Talk I like to say that I'm the big sister of the internet. You can watch me fuck up all you want, but hey, maybe we can learn something from it. I hope you enjoy. Woo! Look at my outfit. Girl, if you're watching the video version, look at my outfit today. She means business today. You saw the title. Today, we're going to be talking about things that I've learned being friends with millionaires in their 20s. And the advice that I'm about to give you I swear to God, this shit, like I, I wish that someone would have told me and I wish that I knew earlier because the shit that I'm about to tell you, they don't even teach you this in school. They don't even teach you this like in any like business course or anything like that. Like this is all just like personal experience that I've seen and that I've acknowledged and like noticed with people who are millionaires in their 20s. And I don't know, I think that it's like really cool and I feel like there's not enough you know, females talking about business and like other business partners and blah, 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 blah. And like, there needs to be more of that because there's so many fucking like men like with microphones, I can't fucking deal with it. But when you start a business, when you start doing the things that you love, when you start becoming into that like millionaire circle and that millionaire status, these are things that I've just noticed and things that I've seen in common with my millionaire friends um, and business owners. And like, I don't know, just like things that I've kind of like picked up on and things that I want to integrate into my life. And like, hopefully, you know, if you want to be like them, then you can integrate into your life too. Pumpkin spice lattes, freshly picked apples. Let's face it, summer isn't the only time we get body odor. We can get just as smelly under our favorite fall sweaters, and that's why I'm excited to tell you about Lumi Whole Body Deodorant for pits, privates, and beyond. Lumi Deodorant was created by an OBGYN who discovered odor isn't just the underarm thing, it's an all-over thing. So she developed Lumi, a pH-optimized deodorant that's clinically proven to control odor everywhere for up to 72 hours. So fall can be just as fresh. As a special offer, new customers Customers will get $5 off Lumi Starter Pack with our exclusive code and link. Use the code GIRLTALK at lumideodorant.com. That's L-U-M-E-D-E-O-D-O-R-A-N-T.com. I love Lumi because it actually works. They have this new acidified cleansing bar and let me tell you guys that stuff is literal magic i love how it makes me smell and it truly keeps me odor free for a super long time i love the lavender sage but also uh, we love a good unscented one <laughs> Lumi is a whole body deodorant. It's the first of its kind. It's seriously safe to use anywhere on your body, your pits, under boobs, thigh folds, belly button, butt cracks, vulvas, and feet. It's clinically proven to block odor all day and control odor for up to 72 hours. How? Well, unlike other deodorants, they try to mask odor with a fragrance. Lumi is formulated and powered by mandelic acid to stop odor before it starts. So it's more like pre-odorant. <laughs> it's aluminum-free, baking soda-free, and paraben-free. It's pH balanced for safe to use below the belt. Clinically proven to control odor better than a shower with soap alone. 12 hours after shower, the average person has an odor level of 6 out of 10. With Lumi, the average odor level is a 0 out of 10. Lumi's starter pack is perfect for new customers. It comes with a solid stick deodorant, cream tube deodorant, two free products of your choice like a mini body wash or deodorant wipes, and free shipping. So as a special offer for listeners, new customers get $5 off a Lumi starter pack with the code GIRLTALK at lumideodorant.com. That equates to over 40% off your starter pack when you visit Lumi Deodorant and use the code GIRLTALK. That's L-U-M-E-D-E-O-D-O-R-A-N-T dot com and use the code GIRLTALK. It's the calm before the holiday storm, but you can prepare your e-commerce business for the holiday rush now just by using ShipStation. Whether you're shipping from your house or a warehouse, ShipStation can help increase your profitability, save time automating your shipping and returns in ShipStation dashboard, and keep costs down with industry-leading carrier discounts while your holiday orders roll in. Did I mention that it also has a free trial and it's super easy to set up? I love using ShipStation because it cuts my time in half as a shop owner and I don't have to worry about shipping things anymore because of ShipStation. You can easily and quickly update crucial order information and reduce errors. They have app for list integration everywhere you sell online, including Amazon, Etsy, eBay, Shopify, and more. They manage print labels, compare rates, optimize every shipment, and automate delivery notifications. ShipStation has enterprise solutions that reduces warehouse costs and improve profitability. ShipStation's robust automations and reporting makes scaling easy, and as your business grows, you can save thousands on shipping costs. 
They have industry-leading discounted rates from USPS, UPS, DHL, and Global Post, and you can get discounts of up to 85% off of USPS and UPS rates. Over 130,000 companies have grown their e-commerce business with ShipStation, and 90% of companies that stick with ShipStation for a year become customers for life. So set up your business for the holiday season with ShipStation. Go to ShipStation.com and use the code STUDIO71 today and sign up for your free 60-day trial. That's ShipStation.com and use the code STUDIO71. Um, but I have like 10 things that I wrote down. Damn, I got a lot of things. Um, but yeah, without further ado, let's just get into it. Number one, I put they focus on their identity work over the perfect career. So what I mean by that is instead of asking themselves like, how do I make more money? They ask themselves, what do I need to do to become the person that makes more money? And I feel like this kind of like shift from how do I make more money? How chasing these goals? Chase, 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 chase. It's like you're always going to be chasing and it's going to be exhausting and it's going to be tiring. You're going to get burnt out. A lot of people that make a lot of money, they ask themselves, how do I become the person that makes a lot of money? Are you going to be doing all of your manual labor? Are you going to be, you know, doing everything yourself? You're not hiring other people to do the tasks that you don't necessarily need to do. Like, I don't think that Bill G- <laughs> I don't think Bill Gates makes his own fucking computers. And I don't think that Jeff Bezos is packing your Amazon orders after every single order. Are you becoming the type of person? And in that might mean like, are you becoming a boss? Are you learning how to manage people? Are you learning how to, you know, better prioritize your time? Are you reading self-help books and blah, 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 blah. I feel like this is just as important as having a good business. Becoming a good boss is just as important as having a good business, in my opinion. So I don't know. Are you asking yourselves, how do I make more money? Or are you asking yourself, who do I need to become in order to make more money? You know, number two, I put all of them quit their jobs to start their businesses. When you work at a job, your boss decides basically how much you make. And when you're your own boss, you basically get to decide and you're in charge of your own products or services. And I know that we all don't have like the privilege to be doing this. And I you know, it sounds super crazy, but we can all start with, you know, dipping our toes in the waters. And like, you know, I always say like, obviously don't have all of your eggs in one basket. And like, you know, it's really scary to like, just quit your job and like pursue something and like do something that's unknown. Um, But you can always do something on the side. Like even when I started doing YouTube, you know, I, I wasn't working. I was like a student, but I didn't just like quit my, you know, being a student to do a YouTube, I, I was a student and I finished being a student. Um, and then once I was finished that, I became like a YouTuber and like started doing it more full time. And I was like, you know what? College is always going to be there for me. College, no matter what, I could be 30 years old. I could be 40. I could be 50. I could always go back to college. But this YouTube thing, it's now. If I stop doing it now, I'm never going to get it back ever again. So that was the advice that my dad gave to me. And I'm so happy that I listened to it because it was life changing. And it's the reason why I even have the career that I have today. But ask yourself, what are you passionate about? Like, are you really putting your heart and soul into it? Like, I feel like also sometimes I feel like when something is my job, I (laughs) because I just feel like I'm a very creative person. And when something is my job and I have to do it, I'm not as passionate about it. So I feel like when I was a student and doing YouTube was kind of like a pastime and it was like a hobby and like it wasn't my job. I was so passionate about it. I was like, I can't fucking wait till the day that I don't have to be a student or like, you know, the day that you don't have to work and I could just do this full time. And then once I finally got to be able to do it full time, it almost like became like a chore sometimes and then you know that's when I started doing like my vlog channel and then suddenly my vlog channel became bigger than my main channel and then that became my job and I was like oh like I don't know when something is like something that you have to do it almost like becomes like a chore to me at least um so that's when I started like you know doing music and then you know now I'm doing my podcast it's like I feel like as a business owner it's like you will always 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 
have that little spark inside of you that just wants to create that startup, that wants to do something new, that wants to have that little side hustle. So even if you don't have the privilege to, you know, quit your job and focus on your career and focus on your business because you ha- you're you really passionate about it, that's totally okay. And I don't know, I, I put that like number two tip of advice of all of them kind of quit their jobs and start their own business because... This is something that I've noticed, but if you don't have the pri- the privilege to do it, I didn't do it. I didn't quit everything to like do my job. But I think that there's something to that because I've noticed that with all of the people that I've met is that all of them quit their jobs to start doing their business. I don't know. <laughs> they all they all have that entrepreneur mind. Um and always wanting just to, you know, create that startup and wanting wanting to do something new. Um, number three, I put, they know the difference between rich and wealthy. This is so important and something that nobody taught me when I first started making money is that there's a huge difference between rich and wealthy. Rich means how much you make a month. Wealthy means how many months you have to sustain yourself if you stopped working tomorrow. So for example, say someone, you know, is doing YouTube, for example, and they're making like so much fucking money a month. They're like ballers, like so fucking cool. Like they're buying designer bags and blah, blah, blah. And like they're so fucking rich and like buying nice Porsches and nice cars and like blah, 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 blah. That's rich. Wealthy is if YouTube died or you stopped working, how long would you be able to you know, live your lifestyle and sustain that lifestyle. So do you have like uh, investments? Do you have um, real estate? Are you renting that real estate out? Um, Do you have other streams of income? Is it only that thing? Diversifying your income is so important. And I think we're going to get to that soon. But I don't know, realizing the difference between rich and wealthy has really made me almost kind of like, look at people differently because you know it's so cool to have like a fast car and it's so cool to have like the newest like chanel bag and it's so cool to like you know have these crazy cool designer things that like not everybody can have but realizing the difference between rich and wealthy to me it almost like makes people that like are flashy and like crazy and like super like i don't know they spend all of their money on like, you know, crazy outlandish shit. It just kind of made me like, you know, realize that they're not as rich as you think. They're just, they're not wealthy, they're rich. I don't know. It's kind of like you put them in a different category of, you know, kind of irresponsible with their money as opposed to, you know, responsible with their money and wealthy. I don't know um number four i put they focus on having multiple streams of income and passive income as opposed to one stream of income they say that the average millionaire has seven sources their streams of income and the average american has one stream of income and it's easier to focus on one thing instead of doing seven things at once so that's what like what i mean by that is to not have seven jobs you don't need to have seven jobs seven jobs is absolutely fucking crazy What I mean is to have maybe one job and six streams of passive income. So at least like to give like an example for me, I have like obviously my social media job that it takes up my time. It's like my labor. It's like my work. And time is the most valuable thing that you could give to anyone. And I give my time to YouTube. So that's my like main stream of income. Um, I have other incomes that also require effort and also require work like, you know, my merch and my podcast and uh, my videos on Facebook that are getting repurposed onto Facebook and my brand deals. And then, you know, I have passive income that I don't even have to think about. Like I have stocks and I have, you know, like S&P 500. I have mutual funds. I have, um, you know, real estate. I rent out that real estate. You know, there's so many different ways to get passive income. Like say you have like a car that you don't really use. You can always go on Turo and rent that out. And you can always, you know, if you have a nice camera, you can always go on like websites to rent out your cameras to nice to to people who want to use it. I also feel like creating these multiple sources of income just made me less stressed about my job doing well because 
you know, obviously you guys know YouTube, you know that views go up and views go down and blah, 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 algorithms change, blah, 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 blah. You literally can never predict what YouTube is going to be like in five years. And like, I'm literally just hoping and praying and hoping and praying that y'all want to be along the journey with me and like, y'all want to have some fun and, you know, keep on watching me. But you literally never know. And there's like YouTube creators that I've literally watched from day fucking one and I still watch them to this day and like they're like my ride or die like fucking Zoella I fucking love that bitch I've been watching Zoella for so fucking long um and then there's people that you know I like kind of like go in seasons and I'll like watch them like you know one year and then you know you kind of forget about them the next year and then the next year you're like oh shit like this cool like they just bought a new house like uh you never really watch them and then oh shit like they're having a baby like let's watch them you know it's like sometimes I feel like I watch people in seasons and then there's some people that I kind of just like watch and like never hear from again um so social media is like so unexpected diversifying your income and making sure that you have different sources of income other than your like main source of income it just relieves the pressure of like okay you know what my vlog didn't do that well today but i know it's going to be doing well tomorrow like i know it's going to be fine it's going to bounce back and i feel like when i only had that one stream of income if one video did bad i would spiral i would smile and be like my career is over and nobody likes me and like oh my god like ah, da, 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 da. and like it doesn't have to be just youtube it could be like you know your like corporate job your nine to five um it could be your sales if you have a business it could be anything and you know everybody has their good days everybody has their bad days i'm sure kylie cosmetics has their bad days and they don't sell out a product you're just like ah my career is over bah. but i am for fucking sure i know kylie has so many streams of income fucking kylie baby fucking um kylie swim kylie makeup kylie everything kylie fucking vibrators i'm sure that she's gonna come out with something like that soon <laughs> and i'm sure she has real estate i'm sure she has um investments i'm sure she has all these crazy things and knows all the crazy rich person loopholes with taxes and stuff like that but definitely 100 percent really look into diversifying your income and i have a podcast episode on uh investing and everything like that and things that i wish i knew when i started making money so if you are interested in this kind of stuff definitely listen to it after this episode then i put number five they all actively invest in themselves and have mentors to help them grow the most successful people tend to be hard on themselves and they always know that they have room for improvement instead of being satisfied with right now or thinking that they know everything bitch isn't that fucking true isn't it the dumbest people that act like know-it-alls like i swear to fucking god like, it's always the dumbest people that think that they know everything real true millionaires and you know smart people i even saw something that said you know jeff bezos and elon musk and bill gates they're constantly reading books and learning new things every single day real rich people real entrepreneurs know that their mind just doesn't like know everything there's all you can learn something from every single person i'm pretty sure that you know elon musk can learn something from like a waiter that he's just like at a restaurant with <laughs> like every single entrepreneur that i know knows that they can learn from someone they can learn something from someone they can learn something from a book they can learn something from an experience no they they never think that they are know-it-alls they're never know-it-alls they never think that they know it all um they know that they can always constantly be learning and i think i saw something that said like i think it was like bill gates reads like 50 books a year which like i think that's like one book a fucking week which honestly that's kind of a, a lot and like you know he's not reading like the little ee, like be booping about like colleen hoover books that are like you know 100 200 pages like you know that bitch is like reading like really crazy like intense fucking books that are like 500 fucking pages long like you you can always keep learning you always put that time into yourself and investing in your um mind and investing in your brain I think that's super, super, super important. Pumpkin spice lattes, freshly picked apples. Let's face it, summer isn't the only time we get body odor. We can get just as smelly under our favorite fall sweaters, and that's why I'm excited to tell you about Lumi Whole Body Deodorant for pits, privates, and beyond. Lumi Deodorant was created by an OBGYN who discovered odor isn't just the underarm thing, it's an all-over thing. So she developed Lumi, a pH-optimized deodorant that's clinically proven to control odor everywhere for up to 72 hours. So fall can be just as fresh. As a special offer, new customers, 
customers will get $5 off Lumi starter pack with our exclusive code and link. Use the code GIRLTALK at lumideodorant.com. That's L-U-M-E-D-E-O-D-O-R-A-N-T.com. I love Lumi because it actually works. They have this new acidified cleansing bar and let me tell you guys that stuff is literal magic i love how it makes me smell and it truly keeps me odor free for a super long time i love the lavender sage but also uh, we love a good unscented one <laughs> Lumi is a whole body deodorant. It's the first of its kind. It's seriously safe to use anywhere on your body, your pits, under boobs, thigh folds, belly button, butt cracks, vulvas, and feet. It's clinically proven to block odor all day and control odor for up to 72 hours. How? Well, unlike other deodorants, they try to mask odor with a fragrance. Lumi is formulated and powered by mandelic acid to stop odor before it starts. So it's more like pre-odorant. <laughs> it's aluminum-free, baking soda-free, and paraben-free. It's pH balanced for safe to use below the belt. Clinically proven to control odor better than a shower with soap alone. 12 hours after shower, the average person has an odor level of 6 out of 10. With Lumi, the average odor level is a 0 out of 10. Lumi's starter pack is perfect for new customers. It comes with a solid stick deodorant, cream tube deodorant, two free products of your choice like a mini body wash or deodorant wipes, and free shipping. So as a special offer for listeners, new customers get $5 off a Lumi starter pack with the code GIRLTALK at lumideodorant.com that equates to over 40% off your starter pack when you visit Lumi Deodorant and use the code GIRLTALK. That's L-U-M-E-D-E-O-D-O-R-A-N-T dot com and use the code GIRLTALK. Number six, I put they have an abundance mindset. They give, whether it's to charity, out of kindness, out of their heart, or even if it's like a tax write-off, they have a purpose for doing their job and they do it at the end of the day because nothing matters if you don't have a purpose. And by abundance mindset, I kind of talked about this in my how I became a lucky person <laughs> vlog where I told you guys a bunch of like mantras and affirmations that I tell myself that to convince myself and to really affirm myself that I'm a lucky person, having an abundance mindset is kind of the same thing. Always knowing that the universe has your back. Everything will work out no matter what. If this doesn't work out, you know that at the end of the day, it's going to work out. Actually, the best way that I could describe it to you is the difference between an abundance mindset and a lacking mindset is a lacking mindset is always thinking of things that they lack. Like, oh, fuck, I don't, I'm not a millionaire. Oh, fuck, I'm not a billionaire. Oh, fuck, I wasn't born with a trust fund. Oh, shit, I'm always lacking. I don't have these things. I will never have these things. This is like a lacking mindset, whereas an abundance mindset is, okay, yeah, okay, maybe I wasn't born in a trust fund and I don't have like gazillions of dollars to spend and I'm not like, you know, born into this lucky family and trust fund. But hey, the world is my oyster. And I know that anything that I want, I can attract. And I know that manifesting is super easy for me. And I know whatever I want, I'm going to be able to achieve it. And maybe I'm going to fail, but I know that at the end of the day, I'm always going to succeed. And maybe I'm not going to hit 100% of my goal, but hell yeah, I'm going to hit at least 80 or 90. This is more so like an abundance mindset, where it's just like, focusing on kind of like the brighter side of things and it's also just being grateful for the things that you already have you guys know i always constantly preach this is the universe is obsessed with a grateful heart the more that you're grateful for things the more that the universe can bring to you to be grateful for so say you know writing down a list of things that you're grateful for in your journal every single day i'm grateful for the roof above my head i'm grateful for the phone that i'm watching this video on i'm grateful for um, the freedom of speech and being able to speak my mind. I'm grateful for, um, you know, my friends. I'm grateful for my family. I'm grateful for my dog. And I'm grateful for my big, fat, juicy fucking ass. <laughs> Just writing down all of the things that you're grateful for. And I swear to you, constantly reminding yourself of the things that you're grateful for, the universe will keep giving you things to be grateful for. The universe is so obsessed with a grateful mind and I don't know why, but it fucking works. And I swear if you do this, you'll attract more abundance into your life. <laughs> and number seven, I just have to say this. I just have to say this because I've seen it and you know, it's not 100% of the time. Sometimes it works out for people and sometimes it doesn't. But if it does work out for you, I swear you're the exception to the rule. 
But I put number seven, they don't mix family and business. It never ends well and it goes with friends and it goes with significant others. And I know people are going to be like, well, me and my significant other have this business and we're successful together. We're like, bitch, good for you. You're the exception to the rule. I've seen so many people get fucked over by their partners, get fucked over by their family, get fucked over by their friends. It just happens but I 100% used to mix my family and my relationship life and you know a lot of things in my business and that doesn't just mean like oh I vlogged my family it was like you know my family was helping me with my business my family was helping me with my taxes my family was helping me with this my family was helping me with that and if I could give my 16 year old younger self any advice I'd be like bitch don't work with your family I would have saved literally hundreds of thousands of dollars like so much fucking money because you know I didn't grow up with you know rich parents and like they didn't know all the rich person life hacks of like how to save money with taxes and how to you know do this and like do things professionally like I my dad used to do my taxes and he would do it by hand and like he you, you know it's like I feel like taxes where you're making a good amount of money should be done by a professional and you should have a corporation and you should be writing things off and you should you know do all of the like rich person life hacks that like people you hire know and your family just won't and I also think just like mixing family with business can like create a little bit of tension because like you know you're mean to your family sometimes we're all a little bit mean to our family sometimes and it like causes tension in the family and I just feel like it's really 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 hard to mix family and business pleasure and business friends and business um partners and business really 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 hard but hey it's really hard but is it doable yeah but if I could go back I would tell myself 100% Adeline girl don't be working with your family say hey family you know what I love you I appreciate you I admire you you're amazing you're spectacular I don't know but I just heard that, you know, you shouldn't be mixing family and business and I don't want things to get messy and I love you guys and I never want, you know, any sort of money or anything to get in between us. Um, And for that reason, I just want to like hire a business manager or I just want to hire a manager. I want to hire this person and I don't want to like, you know, mix family and business because, you know, it gets like a little bit sticky. You know how sticky it gets sometimes, (laughs) Um, as Drake could say um but yeah mixing family and business I wish I knew that but you live and you learn and now I know now and now I have a really good business manager and they save me a lot of money on my taxes and it's good it's good I just I could have saved so much money but it's okay um (laughs) number eight I put they have a corporation and a good lawyer we spend so much time in school and they don't fucking teach us like how to do our taxes. Why don't they teach us how to do that shit? I swear they do that on purpose so that we fill it out wrong and we like do it bad. Just basically know that once you start making a good amount of money, a huge chunk of your money, probably 40 to 50 percent of your money will go to taxes unless you get a good business manager or have a corporation or have a good lawyer. So instead of, you know, shopping on Amazon for a little good write-off, shop for a good lawyer to save you literally so much fucking money, hundreds of thousands of dollars. And this is when like having good, you know, people in business and like good, cool friends that are in business really comes into play because it's so awesome to be able to ask your friend, hey, like, do you have any good lawyer recommendations? Hey, do you have any good business manager recommendations? Hey, do you have any like, you know, blah, blah, blah recommendations? Because having recommendations helps so much. There's so many times where I'm like, you know, trying to find a good lawyer. I'm trying to find a good this. I'm trying to find a good that. And if I just had like a person or had a friend that was in the same field that I was and they really took business seriously and blah, 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 blah. I think I would have saved so much money. And it's so stupid. I wish, fuck, I like, 
I would basically like talk to my YouTube friends about it and be like, yo, you guys, are you spending this much on taxes? And they're like, dude, what? What the fuck? Because like I would give half of my money to taxes and they'd be like, girl, Adeline, you just need to like get a corporation, get a good business manager, get a good lawyer. And I'd be like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll do that. I'll do that. Do that. And like year upon year, I would like kind of like put it off and like I'd be like, oh, like, I don't know. Like I just like spend so much on taxes. I don't know. Poor me. Like, I don't know why me. Like, why am I always spending so much money on taxes? But it's because I was a dumb bitch. And like I mixed family and business and like you know I feel like my my family was really passionate about like you know the money that I was making and they're like no Adeline trust me like I promise I'm writing everything off I'm doing the best that I can like I I'm saving us a lot of money like blah 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 blah. but if I would have listened to my friends that were in the same field that I was and I would have gotten a corporation I would have gotten a business manager I would have gotten a lawyer um I probably would have saved a lot of money and it's just so awkward because like you know you you work with your family and you like you know you don't want to fire your family but how awkward is that so if you have the privilege to not even work with your family in the first place girl i would fucking do that don't mix family and business um <laughs> but yeah number nine i put they invest in property rather than rent but here's the thing about that is i read this book it's called like rich dad poor dad and he basically talks about how having a house is more so a liability as opposed to an asset and the reason why he says that is because an asset is something that puts money into your pocket whereas a liability is something that takes money out of your pocket so the only reason why they say that having a house is kind of bad is because you know you're putting that money and it's as much as like you know People say that, oh, when you're paying rent, m rent is just money going down the drain, blah, 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 blah. At least when you have a house, you know, you have that money at the end of the day and you're able to sell your house and the house goes up in value and blah, 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 blah. blah. But we always need to take in consideration like property taxes, maintenance. Maintenance is so fucking expensive with houses. There's so many like land transfer fees. Like what the fuck? There's so many extra hidden fees when having a house that it's almost the same as having to rent um but one thing that's really cool about a house is you can always get a duplex and you can always like you know if you have a basement it has a separate entrance you can always rent that out and then it's almost like your tenant is paying for your mortgage and that money is going into your pocket which is becoming an asset um so it's really like whatever you prefer i personally love 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 real estate so i love investing in real estate but if it's something that you don't even give a fuck about like don't don't bother and just rent but I always tell people that if you want to invest in something, make sure that you like it because investing, you want to learn about it and you want to be obsessed with it. Like real estate, I've never gotten into stocks. I've never been interested in stocks. I never really cared about it. I like, you know, I hire someone to do my stocks and like my investing for me, but I never really gave that much of a fuck about stocks. Same with like, you know, NFTs. And I never gave a fuck about, you know, um, these like fads and trends and like, you know, whatever. But some people are really passionate about it. And some people really give a fuck about it. And they love stocks and they make so much money on stocks. And like, that's all that matters. If someone doesn't like real estate and they're trying to get into real estate they're not going to do well if someone is obsessed with real estate like i am and they are like obsessed with it they do all of the research they watch like real estate books or they read real estate books the real estate documentaries on netflix like blah 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 they're so obsessed with it that's when you know you're going to be successful so only invest in things that you genuinely really like and that you are genuinely really interested in i don't know <laughs> um and then number 10, I put, they surround themselves with other successful people. And I'm not saying ditch like, you know, the homegirl Sarah that was with you since day one, like that girl's a ride or die, like keep that bitch forever. But what I'm saying is you become like the three people that you hang around the most. So say that you're hanging out with like Joe, who's a couch potato. And all he does is watch Netflix all day. And like, you know, he shows up to his nine to five and like, you know, he has no motivation. He doesn't want to go to the gym, like blah, blah, blah who do you think you're going to be like if you're always surrounding yourself with people like that what do you think you're going to be like as opposed to hey you hang out with you know um 
Joanne and Joanne is really fucking successful and she has like a business and she's always um, staying busy. She's investing in her brain. She's reading really a lot of books. She's investing in her physical health. And by the way, I didn't even add this to the list, but a lot of um, entrepreneurs and millionaires that I've met also really invest in their physical health as well as their mental health because I don't know what it is. Being in good physical health, it just makes your brain healthier and i always say that like your brain is like a muscle and you need to like you know really like fuel it and feel it and what what was my quote that i have on my vision board i just have the brain is a muscle and understanding is joyous but if you're surrounding yourself with like you know girls like joanne and they're working out they're reading books they're always wanting to be a better version of themselves as opposed to you know the couch potato that they're just like a know-it-all and they're like oh nah, nah, nah. <laughs> and she's you know traveling and she's meeting other entrepreneurs and she's uh going to conventions she's finding mentors she's investing her money she could give you genuine advice about investing which i always say don't ever take investing advice from your friends always do that research on your own but you know i feel like if you're always surrounding yourself with like cool people that are in the same field that you are that are successful they always say that if you're working for someone that you don't eventually want to be don't work for them because you know you want to surround yourself with people that you want to eventually be if someone has something that you have dm them become their friend like i don't know i feel like i always get so nervous and i'm like oh my god this person is so cool like i don't know like if i dm them like they're probably not gonna respond they're gonna think that i'm so weird and like pathetic for like reaching out but i never think that i see people reaching out in my dms all the time and they're like asking to hang out and like obviously you only have like 24 hours in a day and like i'm the type of person where i literally have like two friends so it's like you know i can't respond to everyone but I never think that. And like, you know, just like reach out to people. If someone has something that you have, whether that's uh, success, whether that's money, whether that's, you know, this or that, or you want to learn something from someone, just reach out to them. Because like if the worst thing that can happen is nothing, then you might as well fucking do it. <laughs> but yeah, that was, this is kind of like a bonus tip and we kind of already touched on it. But I also feel like every single entrepreneur, millionaire that I've met also invest in their physical health they always say that health is wealth and as long as you're healthy you have everything in the world that you could ever imagine um i don't know i feel like go to the doctor make sure you go to your doctor's visits go to the dentist i know that we don't all like the dentist but you know you got to invest in your health make sure that you don't have a root canal or something like that you know that could, that should could affect you um go to the gym go uh you know to a nutrition start like learning about new foods that you can make go to a cooking class go to a nutrition class like health is wealth and i feel like i've seen bill gates talk about this so much he's always like health is wealth health is, health is wealth health is, health is wealth because you can be the richest man in the world but you can't pay someone to take over your like dying body or like your unhealthy body you can't pay someone to you know how take your sickness or like you know anything like that like your health is wealth and as long at the end of the day if you just have health you have everything in the entire world and i think that's definitely something to be grateful for yeah that's all of my tips that i could give you guys about you know all the things that i've noticed from really cool entrepreneurs and really rich people and like you guys they don't teach this shit in school like i've taken business courses and like i've you know i have friends that have been to school for business and blah 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 blah. they don't teach this shit this shit comes from like real life experiences so i hope that all the things that i've learned i hope that you know you can kind of take away with you and like hopefully you've learned something from this uh podcast episode but i love talking about you know finance shit and like if you guys have any other finance questions or like anything like that i asked you guys you're like i was like um what are some girl talk you know podcast episodes that you guys would want me to talk about and you guys were like finance talk about finance i even had like a girl go up to me she was so fucking cool i was at the louis vuitton store and i was walking out and she goes up to me she's dripping she's wearing a dior coat i remember she was like so fucking cool she's like adeline i love your videos but i have to tell you something you need to do more finance videos like i eat that shit up i love that shit like you need to be making more videos like that and i never forgot that girl like she's 
so cool and she's like i don't like really take your advice with like finance like please make more finance videos so let me know if there's any other you know finance advice or finance videos that you want me to make because i would love 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 to do that i love anything finance and like it's honestly like what i spend a lot of my spare time doing is just like researching and like you know trying to become a, a better version of myself and like how do i make more money and like how do I, you know, create more passive income and blah, 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 blah. If you do like these types of podcasts and definitely listen to my other two that I made as well. Um, but yeah. It's the calm before the holiday storm, but you can prepare your e-commerce business for the holiday rush now just by using ShipStation. Whether you're shipping from your house or a warehouse, ShipStation can help increase your profitability, save time automating your shipping and returns in ShipStation dashboard, and keep costs down with industry-leading carrier discounts while your holiday order roll in. Did I mention that it also has a free trial and it's super easy to set up? I love using ShipStation because it cuts my time in half as a shop owner and I don't have to worry about shipping things anymore because of ShipStation. You can easily and quickly update crucial order information and reduce errors. They have app for list integration everywhere you sell online, including Amazon, Etsy, eBay, Shopify, and more. They manage print labels, compare rates, optimize every shipment, and automate delivery notifications. ShipStation has enterprise solutions that reduces warehouse costs and improve profitability. ShipStation's robust automations and reporting makes scaling easy, and as your business grows, you can save thousands on shipping costs. They have industry-leading discounted rates from USPS, UPS, DHL, and Global Post, and you can get discounts of up to 85% off of USPS and UPS rates. Over 130,000 companies have grown their e-commerce business with ShipStation, and 90% of companies that stick with ShipStation for a year become customers for life. So set up your business for the holiday season with ShipStation. Go to ShipStation.com and use the code STUDIO71 today and sign up for your free 60-day trial. That's ShipStation.com and use the code STUDIO71. 71. We're going to move on to the next segment of the podcast, which is wow, 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 thoughts. When I'm with you, I like it. It's wild thoughts. We're going to do what would Rihanna do because. Rihanna's my icon. She's my queen. Whenever I'm feeling insecure, I'm always like, what would Rihanna do? And that's the advice I'm going to give to you right now. Um, but the first question I thought was juicy as fuck. Let's get into it. We're not talking about finances no more, girl. We're, <laughs> we're going to be talking about I found a nude of another girl on his phone that he took five years ago. OK, dot, dot, dot. without her consent. I'm scared. Girl, I'm scared too. I'm fucking scared too. I feel like consent is a very basic human trait that everybody should have, but unfortunately, not everyone does. And it's the very low, very small minded men, not even men, little boys that just don't know what it is. And I guess like nobody taught them that no means no. And you can't just like, take a photo of someone naked without their fucking consent that's illegal that's literally fucking illegal like you can't just like do that shit even if it's like for your own private reasons you never post it you can't just like do that shit i definitely would be a little bit weary of that person because consent is something that you just you just have it's kind of like common sense like you just have it um so if that person doesn't have you know basic consent knowledge i would definitely be a little bit nervous and i would definitely bring it up and be like hey like i saw this nude on your phone and like it isn't concerning to me other than the fact that it looks like it was taken without her consent and like if you ever take a photo of that like that of me i'm gonna feel super uncomfortable and just to let you know that shit's illegal like you can't be doing that shit and this is like basic consent like no means no and like just because you know you didn't ask for something doesn't mean that you have permission to do it i don't know i take that shit really seriously like i wouldn't take that shit lightly that's kind of like not cool um but yeah i would definitely bring it up and if not then i would just ghost him because a little scary Mm, someone said what to do when you feel like you need to change everything about your life girl don't we all have those days i literally have those days like every other day i'm like i am reinventing myself i am going to be a brand new bitch like as of tomorrow i fucking hate myself like blah, blah, blah. <laughs> 
But I don't know. I think it's just like about, you know, self-work and like realizing who you are and knowing who you are and not letting anyone take that shit away from you. Because if you know who you are, no one can take that shit away from you. Um, Something that can help with like building your identity and helping you really truly love yourself is like, you know, make goals and like make a vision board. I made a YouTube video on how to make every single year. I think I make YouTube videos on how to make a vision board and I kid you not that shit isn't just arts and craft like that shit works like maybe I don't achieve like 100% of my goals but I damn near accomplish at least 50% of them and isn't that fucking crazy make a fucking vision board you know go on Pinterest find an aesthetic that you like um and you know I feel like nobody really knows 100% what they are or who they are even Ariana Grande like in her one of her speeches she was like you know I this was the best year of my career and this was probably the worst year of my personal life and I have absolutely no fucking clue what I'm doing with my life and if you don't know what you're doing with your life you're not alone and I don't know I really like admired that about her because you know you think of Ariana Grande and you're like oh my god she's like a millionaire billionaire she has her whole life figured out she has millions of fans like she just has her whole life figured out but at the end of the day nobody really does nobody knows what's going to happen tomorrow no one knows what's going to happen in five years no one knows what's going to happen in 20 years um and it's just a part of life so i don't know i think that there's kind of like beauty in the unknown um and kind of changing your perspective on it and like really learning to like love yourself and like you know all of the seasons and all of the eras that you've been in um and just creating goals and having a vision board i think that will help oh someone said what is the pettiest thing that you could do to your ex i could get so steamy and so spicy with this one but you know what i'm gonna tell you something that you probably don't want to hear and i know you want to hear my toxic advice and as much as i want to give my toxic advice the pettiest thing that you could do to an ex is never acknowledge them ever again because you know i feel like you know we could do these petty things we could slash their tires we could light their house on fire we could like do the craziest gnarliest shit like you know carve your name in like the fuck in the back of the car i don't know you could do the gnarliest shit but i think the thing that drives exes the craziest the absolute fucking craziest is apathy and what is apathy it's the opposite of love nothing apathy apathy is just like i couldn't care less i really could not care less what you're doing right now because you know when you do these petty things you know haha i got under their skin haha they're thinking about me haha they're heartbroken blah 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 blah. but how mind fucking is it that someone can be your everything one day and then it's just like business as normal after it's just business as normal from here on out and you don't hear from them and they seem completely fine and they're not spiraling they're not going to the club every single day they're not they're thriving they're like in their career and they're thriving how mind fucking is that like maybe they'll start thinking hey wait like they're kind of thriving like was i the problem was i holding them back like why why are they just doing good now like i i thought that i was the light in their life i thought that i was like the thing that was building them up i thought that i was like their purpose in life but it turns out they're thriving without me how much of a mind fuck is that anyways i think that the pettiest thing that you could do to an ex is completely ignore them apathy apathy the definition of apathy is lack of interest enthusiasm or concern that's what i feel like is the coolest thing and the pettiest thing that you can do to an ex is literally just focus on yourself business as usual fuck them like you don't even think about them and you're kind of just like thriving without them oh i like this question how to make long distance work am i annoying do i say that every question i love this question i i've tried i'm just looking through that's why i like yeah i love this question um someone said how to make long distance work and as much as i fucking hate long distance surprisingly enough i mean i don't know eh, i travel a lot and the two relationships that I've ever been in, I've done long distance with both of them. And you know what really helps with long distance is, you know, setting up dates and 
This is super cute and like something that I like, you know, just found out and like just started doing. I feel like we can lose the spark and we could kind of lose the, you know, sexiness and the sexual attention when I'm not going on dates. At least for me, I feel like my love language, ultimate love language is acts of service. Acts of service gets me wet. It gets me like steamy. It makes me horny. Like I if you take out the trash and I don't even ask, ooh, oh my God panties are dripping if you do the dishes and i don't even ask oh oh my god literally my pants are off acts of service is my like absolute favorite thing and something that i feel like helps with long distance is being able to do acts of service so like you know planning dates going on dates on facetime and what i mean by that is like maybe you set a specific time like hey we're going to FaceTime at 8 p.m. my time, you know, since it's 5 p.m. your time. And we're going to either cook the same thing or we're going to Uber Eats each other stuff. So like I'm going to Uber Eats you a surprise and you're going to Uber Eats me a surprise. And I don't know, it's really cool. And you could do like dessert or you could like, you know, you know, cook the same food and be like, oh, my God, this tastes so bad. or Oh, my God, this tastes so good. And like, you know, spend quality time with each other. I think also spending quality time like you, there's. I think during quarantine, there was like this thing where you could watch Netflix shows at the same time and like FaceTime at the same time. I don't, I forget what it's called, but um, I think definitely setting up dates really helps. And also for me, I feel some sort of like peace when I know the next time I'm going to see them. So if we're doing long distance for like, you know, X amount of time, I feel so much better knowing the exact date that I'm going to see them. That's why I, I don't know. And it's also better to like just book your flights in advance because it's going to be a lot cheaper. But knowing the exact date just like gives me peace of mind because when I'm like, oh, I'm probably going to see you like next month, but like I don't really know. And like, blah, 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 blah. You're like, what are you going to book your flight? Blah, 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 blah. Knowing the exact date, I'm like, oh my God, I get to see you in two weeks. I'm like so excited. I'm like counting down. I'm like, blah, 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 blah. I don't know. I think those things have really helped me with long distance. Um, and it's the acts of service for me. It's the acts of service for fucking me, bitch. <laughs> the next question, um, I think it will be the last question. I think it's really cool. I saw Victoria Paris do a video like this um, on TikTok. And she basically said, the question is, how to ask for a raise? And Victoria Paris, I think I have to find the video that she was talking about this. But she basically was like, women are underpaid. Whatever your, you know, if you're looking for a new job or you're looking uh, to transfer jobs or looking, you know, for whatever. And they kind of like, I don't think they're allowed to ask you what you make as a salary, but um, they can ask you like what salary you would be comfortable with. Always, 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 if you're a woman, always say 20% more than what you're making right now because women are always getting paid less than men and we're always getting underpaid and we're always getting undervalued. So if you're a woman and you're looking for a new job, always ask for that 20% more. How to ask for a raise. Um, I think, I, I don't really know how to give advice with this. <laughs> but just know that if you're a woman, 100%, you should be asking for money or more money because probably 90% of the time you're probably getting underpaid and your male counterparts are probably getting paid a little bit more than you which sucks but it's life and we just have to ask for more money <laughs> you know what fuck it i'm just gonna do one more question someone said how do you break up with a nice guy i'm just not feeling it anymore um and i thought that this was kind of a good question to put in this podcast episode because i think this really has to do with all relationships how do you break up with a nice guy how do you break up with like that nice coworker? how do you break up with that you know nice person that you work with um if you're just not feeling it anymore and maybe they didn't do anything bad they didn't cheat on you they didn't do you wrong they didn't do this they didn't do that but you just know that it's not working out it's not you know nobody's benefiting from the relationship nobody's benefiting in your career nobody's benefiting from this situation and it just needs to end. I've struggled with this so much in my life. My life coach always tells me, Adeline, you're such a loyal person. You're loyal to a fault, to a point where it's like you let people that have been around 
with you, like almost kind of like take advantage of you because of the fact that they've, you know, been around in your life for so long. And it's okay to, you know, break things off with people, even when they're nice, they don't have to do anything bad for you to like cut off of your life. They don't have to, you know, you know, cheat on you or like do anything crazy or like, you know, outlandish for you to realize that it's just not working out anymore. And this is something that I've struggled with so much. I get, I struggle with like just being comfortable with people and comfortability and relationships. And, um, you know, I'm always like, you know, uh, I don't know. I feel like, you know, this person's always complaining about working, but like, you know, Hey, like they've been with me for two years and like, they're really loyal. And like, they were really good in the beginning and blah, blah, blah. And you know, it's the same with relationships. Um, you know, this person was so good in the beginning. I'm thinking about back about it and like all the good memories we had. I'm looking back at my camera roll, like how much we're smiling. Like he makes me so happy. I swear he makes me so happy. But you know, today you're not happy and you know, it's not working out. And you know that, you know, something is, it's almost like you wish that they would cheat. You wish that something would happen. You wish that they would fuck up. You wish that because it would make it easier to end the relationship because you know it needs to end. This is something that I struggle with and I like, I'm like giving advice, but it's like I'm like giving advice to myself. But I think at the end of the day, if your gut is telling you and your body is telling you, sometimes I feel like my body knows when a relationship is over before my head knows. If your gut is telling you something, you have to listen to it and you have to listen to your intuition because it's telling you that for a reason. And maybe it's not logical and maybe it like doesn't make sense right now. But if your body's feeling it, girl, you have to trust your intuition. You have to trust your gut. Um, so how would you break up with someone that's like break up with a nice guy? It's really, really sad. Um, but again, I would just do like, you know, a compliment sandwich. Hey, I really love you. And I love spending all the time you know, all the time that we spent together. Um, I love looking back at all the memories and you're an amazing person. I will love you forever. But I just feel like it's not working out right now. Um, I feel like, you know, maybe you feel like it's not working out right now. And, you know, it's kind of an awkward thing to talk about, but I'm just not, you know, feeling it anymore. And I feel like this is a really amazing chapter and we had a really amazing memories, but we need to close this chapter um, and move on. And again, I appreciate you. I will always love you. But I think that this is for sure a chapter that we need to end. I don't know. Compliment. What you need to say. Compliment. That's why we call it compliment sandwich. I always say this with everything. Um, but yeah, it goes with everything. It goes with relationships. It goes with friendships. It goes with, you know, business partners. It goes with people that you work with. It goes with everything. Um, and I don't know if, if this is just like a me thing, but I have struggled with this so much and it's like so easy to tell you like, trust your gut, trust your gut, like blah, 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 blah. But it's like, it's hard when someone is nice and it's hard when, you know, they haven't done anything wrong. And then like, it's hard when, you know, there's no like crazy specific reason. They haven't cheated on you. They haven't done anything. But what I've learned is your gut tells you, your body tells you when the other person doesn't have good intentions and maybe they don't show it. Maybe there's no specific reason. Maybe they haven't done you dirty, but it's kind of sad. But every single time that I've listened to my gut with someone that I think has bad intentions, but they haven't done anything wrong, when things end, it's when their ugly side comes out and that's when, you know, pe people try to sue you and people try to take things that you have. And like, it's like when their greedy and ugly side comes out. Um, and I look back at like the relationships that I was so loyal to and I was like, wow, like, you know, in the relationship, I would have never imagined how they treated me at the end of this relationship but you know being in the situation that i'm in now i'm like i am so glad that i listened to my gut i'm so glad that i listened to my gut and i ended that relationship because imagine if 
that relationship progress even further. Imagine if they took more years out of my life. Imagine they took, you know, more months out of my life. Imagine, you know, whatever. And now I'm like at a place where I'm like, okay, that person is out of my life. I've learned from my mistakes. Next time I feel that gut feeling of, you know, this needs to end and, you know, this person isn't a good fit for my life anymore. I really need to listen and trust my gut. But I think that concludes the end of this Girl Talk episode. I really hope that you guys enjoyed today's episode of just finances, things that I've learned from being around, you know, 20 year old entrepreneurs and millionaires. Um, I hope that you take away anything, you know, from this podcast. Hopefully you've learned something. And if not, then girl, hopefully you learn it in the real world because I fucking had to. (laughs) I always feel like I get advice from my friends and like, Sometimes I, I don't necessarily like trust them or like take their advice. And then I have to learn it in the real world. And I'm like, damn, yep, I definitely should have listened to you. And they're like, yep, I told you so. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed. And uh, if you're listening to this on YouTube, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed. And if you're listening to this on Spotify, Apple Music, wherever you listen to podcasts, make sure to rate my um, podcast. It means a lot and it, it, it helps me a lot. Um, so make sure to rate the podcast um and yeah i love you guys and i guess i'll talk to you next time Ah, it's literally five in the morning what the fuck is wrong with me i didn't want to say to the beginning of the episode because i didn't want you guys thinking that i was like tired but i'm definitely slurring my words and mumbling and i'm so sorry (laughs) i was like i don't know acting really like tired in this video but my camera's about to die um i'm always here if you need to talk every wednesday i'll be here same place same time love you guys did you like that episode i really hope that you did um if you haven't already then make sure to watch last week's episode or the week after just click on the links whatever it is um and i hope that you guys enjoyed also be sure to subscribe because it helps me a lot um but i love you and i hope you have an amazing rest of your day bye Oh, this gush. Oh, no, you can't get enough. Sip, sipping on a wine.